We're live. <clears throat> Let me just, uh, I don't have a pause screen, so I'm live immediately. Let me just uh, mention what we're doing here. All right, so we've posted that. Now, as you can see, can I? Yeah, we're just gonna have to deal with the profile shot today. So as you can see in the microscope view, I'm gonna be doing some soldering. I've got uh, this kit from Boldport, uh, and it's a sort of monthly um, electronic subscription thing. But, actually, before we do that, I'm doing doing something entirely new here. We're actually streaming from the Mac, so if uh, anyone who's watching could let me know and tell me that this is working correctly, that would be great. Uh, we'll put those over there. I might as well do this while I'm at it. You can't see any of this, by the way. I'm, I'm just getting prepared. Uh, pardon me. Uh, ooh, my iMac is not liking this streaming right now. Hey, Skynet's lawyer, Lord Cabbage. They both say everything seems legit. All right, so first things first, I want to do this soldering. We're also going to do some programming. Um, I'm working on a new version of the XSplit extension that we use uh, every day for streaming to uh, control the streams. But first, when I got into the office today, I saw this. <clears throat> this is our green screen. And you can see uh, in this area here, you can see my mouse, yeah? Uh, so in this area, it's held up by a rack. In this area, it's held up by tape. But that tape uh, only holds it up for a couple of weeks, a couple of months maybe, and then it falls down, and then we have to climb up on a ladder and tape it back in again. But I have a... I have a 3D printer. So we're going to use the 3D printer to solve this. Got uh, Fusion 360 here. Now I can hide all of that. So basically, my plan is I have. Go over here. I've got some paracord. Can you? I'm holding that not up to the camera. That's the camera. Paracord. Just normal cable. Um, so let's toss that over there. Now the idea is we're going to uh, make something that can be... Phil D just subscribed for two months in a row. Thank you very much, Phil D. Cool. So the plan is I'm going to make a little thing that we can uh, hook onto the wall with 3M command strips. Because command strips are awesome. And, whoa. The camera's on my scale. Did that? All right, yeah. So, first things first, got a top-down view. We've created a sketch. Now, how big should this thing be? Um, do I have any command strips here? No, I don't. One moment. Okay, these are the only ones we have uh, in stock today. And they're much tinier than the ones we usually use. How long is that? It is one inch and, a, inch and an eighth. All right, or what is it? Uh, 28 millimeters? 
in, in normal terms. <clears throat> so, it's got to be bigger than that anyway. All right. Um, so, let's make a rectangle. Uh, center rectangle. So, what do I think? If this was 60 millimeters square, that ought to be plenty big. So let's do that, and now we hit Q to extrude this. Inch tall? Mm. Yeah, let's do an inch tall. We'll give it a taper angle just because it doesn't need to be beefy everywhere. Uh, taper that in 10 degrees. Okay, now we're going to make a new... This is just going to take a second. It'll take forever to 3D print, but I figured I'd get started with this because I haven't done any really 3D on the stream here. Uh, all right, what do we want to sketch now? We want to sketch a center circle. So we're going to go in here, and this can also be 25 millimeters. Bam. Now, what do I want this to look like? Um, oh. I'm doing this the wrong way around. I was, oh no. Huh, yeah, uh, let's, let's undo all of this, go back to the sketch. Now, uh, we're gonna stop the sketch here. Fusion, I want you to go, why is it not showing me the go home button? All right, whatever. Uh, so this is the top. Now if we go like that, excellent. So 25 millimeters, is it 25? And 10, 25, and minus 10. All right. That makes more sense, I hope. Let's make sure we've got the origin on. Yeah, that's sticking up out of the origin now. That is what we want to have happen. So we're gonna go here, sketch that center circle. I'd said 25, and then we can just go up with that. I was thinking about putting like some kind of ball feature at the end, but we probably don't need that. Actually, maybe I can, okay. Um, so that'll go up 30. 45, no, that's the taper angle. I don't want a taper angle on this. I want this up 45 millimeters. All right. Now, we're going to design the end of it. So I'm doing a sketch this way. And I, honestly, we can just do this all with circles. There we go. Uh, why not? And now we want to revolve this. So can we revolve that around the Z axis? Axis. Whoa, there's some smashing going on right now. Um, Oh, right, because I made a circle and not what I needed to do, which is half a circle. So let's edit this sketch. Uh, go zoom in here. Space Mouse is sometimes hard to use. Good most of the time, though. All right, so we want to make a line line will go from there to the origin and we're we're in all sorts of goofy 3d perspectives so it's hard to tell what's going on there um, then we're going to make another line on this same point but it's going to go up here and now i can make a point so we'll make a point 
point here and here. Now, there we go. So now we can revolve this. So if we go here and select this axis that we've now made, we don't want to cut, we want to join. And there, we've got a nice ball on the end. Excellent. <clears throat> so the last thing I want to do to this is we need to come up with the hole size. What for we can put a little bit of this through. So I'm just tying this up into knots now. I think let's put, so what I'm doing is I'm just going to loop four loops around here and then we'll loop this and then I can measure from that point to this point. That didn't go right. Um, well, if our shaft is 25 millimeters, we'll just call this 10. That seems fair. So, uh, no, I don't want the XY plane. That's the wrong plane for this sketch. All right, new sketch. We want the shore. And now. Be smart to measure this, but we can. Oh, well, that'll work. So I said 10 millimeter hole, and we want to extrude that. Come on. All right, I may have to hide the body here. Now we'll select that. Now we'll show the body, and we want this symmetric hole length. Uh, two, no, we want, want this all, but we want it both, all on both sides. All right. Now, as a last step, before I go 3D print this, let's throw in some chamfers everywhere. Um, so we're gonna fill it this, let's give that, say, I don't know, we can go crazy on that five ten millimeters even yeah I like that all right now we will select all of these edges if you want to ask any questions about what I'm doing or why I'm doing it this way please feel free to ask because that's kind of why I'm doing this stream so we'll knock these edges down three millimeter fillet and then we will also come in here and give that come on 10 just make this whole thing look like ice cream I think that works I don't quite know why it's got the bulbous feature on the end but I guess you could tie something around there yeah this is this is what we want right Who, who thinks that this is what I need? Who thinks I've gone crazy? Let me give that just a tiny fillet to make it easier to come off of the build plate. And I will save this as, um, save it as a green screen tie point. All right, now what do I need to do? Now I need to select this whole thing and save as STL. Let's just spin this around. We got a hole, hole goes all the way through. We got a base, base is too big. We got this. This is gonna take like a week to print. Is it not gonna open Kira for me? Okay, fine. Uh, so we'll save that onto the desktop and 
Time to open Cura. So what am I making? I am making something to hold our green screen on the wall. Um, this happens every month or two. So my thought is that it's got a little pocket in the top of the green screen where you could put like a curtain rod through it. Uh, except we don't have a curtain rod, so I'm gonna put some paracord through it. And on the other end, I'm going to put this little thing and we're gonna stick it to the wall with some 3M command strips because they come off cleanly. And where did Kira go? Kira's over here. All right, uh, you don't need to see that. Let's pop this full screen. How's the frame rate looking? Is it is it looking too bad? Is it looking okay? That's whatever the last thing I was printing is. Okay, green screen tie points. <clears throat> Ooh, yeah, that is pretty big. But, or, yeah, I, I want it like this. So, let's pop open the 3D printer cam. And, oh, I should tr probably... Just a layer view here. And then let's see what we're going to do on the infill. Um, I mean, I kind of like this gradual infill. It's been working pretty good for me. So, sure, we'll just leave it there. Print that with Octo Print. Is my. Build plate clean, let me just go check and make sure the build plate is all good. All right, so that should be printing. And now if I um, need a new Chrome window here. Whoop, that's the next space. Don't want to cheat. Okay, octo pi.local. So we can take a look at the temperatures. I'll install Repeter. All right, I'll install all that later. Um, okay, so this is going to take a few minutes to heat up. So what are we doing next? Well, let me clean up the mess that I've made over here while we were doing that. Command strips everywhere. Put those back there. Okay. So, Bold Port Club. Um, here, tell you what we'll do. I'm going to leave that there and stupidly close the window like an idiot. No, I wanted a new Chrome window. Sorry, guys, this is, I know what I'm doing. Uh, what I meant to do was open up a new tab and then split that off over here. I'll, I'll say I marked those, come on. Okay, so the bed is heated up to 52 degrees Celsius and the hot end has not started heating yet, but I wanna go to Nope, I can spell. I, I can really spell. O L D P O R T dot com. Moss tap. There we go. So, oh, I'm cut off a little bit here. Actually, why don't we sw swap those windows around? You don't need to see all of this. Here we go. So, what is this? This is the Moss Tap Touch Sensitive Blast from the Past. Now, I had kind of intended to bring some LEDs or something so that we could see this working, but I think we're just going to put it together. Let's see. So lots of different values of resistors, going to need to pay attention to that. Got a little schematic here. So 
So I have not um, done any soldering in a long time. But let's look what we have here. I'm going to switch over. Uh, oh, we're, we're heating up here on the printer. So that's about to start moving. Let me, let me switch over here to the microscope. And we'll bring the printer cam back up. So let's see what we have in this kit. We've got the circuit board, double-sided here. This is the this is the front side. I love their crazy organic circuit board stuff that they managed to do. Yep, there goes the 3D printer. And this is the component side. So we'll have to figure out exactly what components all of these are. Let's take a look. Uh, so I've got this little bag of, of bits here. What do we have here? So we've got the ICs, which are, what are these? It's all the same. On a little piece of conductive foam. We have our transistors. The two aforementioned values of resistors. This resistor right here. Wow, those the colors on this are really terrible. Is that center one violet? I can't even tell. It does not look that violet in real life, I'll tell you that much. Um, now I'm, I'm terrible at remembering resistor values, so I'm just gonna find my uh, meter and we'll use that. And we've got some nice uh, headers here. It actually looks some, like some good headers. Uh, a couple of caps. And these would be our diodes, I believe. All right. And then there's some schmoo. All right. Join the resistors. So, let's swing back over to, well, first let me go check on the 3D printer here. I will. Sometimes the first layer doesn't adhere well on this thing. All right, so let's jump over here and take a look at this. Can we not zoom this in anymore? Uh, let's save this and zoom in. I'm big in that schematic here. Okay, so taking a look at this, we've got six transistors, those are easy, and the three ICs. And it looks like this actually does label the resistor values. So we've got 10 mega ohm resistors and 1 mega ohm resistors. We've got a diode going this way. And apparently, we're leaving off these capacitors. Um, What's going on here on X? I think that's what they were mentioning about chaining this together. I'll stop reading these Slack messages here. Um, We haven't 
problems with the printer? No, I guess it's being, I guess it's behaving. All right. So, here. I, I want to keep reading this just a little bit. Um, yeah, so this is basically some NAND gates. All right. Let's figure out what all these components are, and then I will get to soldering. So that's what we're doing. Bring in my shitty multimeter here, and... In ohms mode. All right. Um, sorry. Let's try and get there to be something for you to see here. Uh, so. Probe across these. And that. These are the one mega ohms. All right. So that would make these 10 mega ohm. Yep, there was 10, 9 something mega ohm. These are our diodes. Which direction do di these work? I don't know the markings. Um, all right, yeah, so the side with black stripe. Oh, sorry, I was doing that off camera. Side with the black stripe here is going to be negative. That makes sense. I will check this resistor too, just for the hell of it. But this is obviously going to be the odd man out here. Oh, it'd help if I put it back into resistance mode. Three mega ohm. Okay. So where does the three mega ohm one go? That's R13. Can I find R13 on here? 2.7 mega ohm. Yeah, all right. Well, let's get putting this together here. Um, I wish I could make this microscope be further away. Oh, did I switch to the PC? When did I do that? Sorry. Huh. Um, let's see what I can do. Sorry, this is, it's attached to the mic stand, so you're going to be able to hear this here. I hope that's not murdering all of the headphone users. I'm sorry if it is. Okay, now... Yoink. Yep. Okay, move that around here. This up all the way to here. And this is still tiny, but maybe that's better. Let's. Oh, yeah, that's way better. Okay. And I've got my side cutters here. I just mixed up the resistors again. These are the one, and these are the 10. All right, we'll keep it on those sides. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm just gonna start popping in all these resistors here. So we'll cut the, where am I here? Where am I? 
cutting the ends off. And we determined that this was R13 and R13 goes here. Should probably pre-bend these resistors. All right, R13. Perfect. There's our first component in. Now, gonna bend these. Bend them super unevenly, but that's fine. And off okay now these were supposed to be one mega ohms I believe you can just check that one more time because I'm an idiot wasn't shorting them together with my hand. There you go. Okay. So those go in R2, R4, R6, R8, R10, and R11. I can do that. R2. All right. Bend those out on the other side so it doesn't move. Two, four. Sorry, this is I'm I'm doing a terrible job of doing things on screen, aren't I? Ooh, I bent this one bad. All right, let me show you what I've done here. So you can kind of see this is the one I'm putting in and it's not going well. So I'm gonna see if I can't fix that. All right, that's better. R4. R6 is the next one. Just going to try and do a little bit job, better job of bending these leads before I put it in here. R6. That looks good. And then keep going up. R8. All right. How's that 3D print coming? Looks like we're into the infill. So that was R8. Now we're doing R10 and 11. Ten and eleven. And not that it matters, but I'm putting these all the same side up because it'll look cooler that way. All right, so now to the back side, we're going to bend these leads sort of flat so like so, so the components don't all fall back out again. Okay, <clears throat> now let's get these 10K resistors in. 
So, same deal. Choppity chop off the tape. And I think that's, yeah, we, I don't even need to look at the schematic because that's just all of the remaining resistors, isn't it? Try bending these leads individually. I, if you can't tell, I have not soldered or made any boards in a long time. I have done this before. This is not my first rodeo, but... Okay. Hurry up and get these all in here. All right. Whoop. I want to get that the right way around. Resistors are obviously non-polarized components, but this is this is like a piece of art, right? And I don't know, like, I don't know if I'm doing this right, but this is how I'm bending the resistors down. Seems to work good enough. I should put a piece of tape on here, on the, this thing, right where the shot is. That would help me. Okay. Couple of more resistors here. Get those in all the way. Okay. Whoop. This is coming out. Oh, I didn't bend those those legs back. And that looks okay. Boom, so that is all of our resistors in. Now, what do we have next? Are these, these capacitors would not be polarized, would they? There's no way you could tell if they were. What does this one say? 400 and, let me focus this a little bit better. This is 473. Does that say the same thing on it? I genuinely can't tell. It says 471. The caps can't be that close in value. Let me, where do the caps even go? Oh, they are, they are different in value. So one of them should be 470 picofarads, and the other one should be 47 nanofarads. It says 473. Like, I'm not crazy. That says 473, doesn't it? And then this one says... I think 471. So, we're going to have to measure those. Do I have... even have a capacitor test on this?
Hmm. Um. Do I have a worse multimeter that does have a tester on it? I mean, I'm guessing the bigger one would be the bigger value. I don't think I'm on the right mode here. It's a diode test and a beep. Then I don't know what HFE mode is. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, that's not ideal. Four seven three and this. Let me, I'm going to focus just on this here. Get it to focus. Stay still. Maybe that just says 400, 47. I'm saying this is the 47 uh, nanofarad one. And then this. That definitely says 473. So we're going to say that's the 471. Uh, that's C2. So let me focus back on the board here. Uh, where does C2 go? C2 is here. So. You need like a form to put these leads in properly, I think. Well, whatever. We'll pretend like I'm happy with that. And now, where does C1 go? C1 is on the opposite side. Okay. Do I want to try and put the transistors and diodes in at the same time, or is that going to be too much stuff to solder right next to each other? I think we'll start here. So. got some shitty Radio Shack uh, solder that's been sitting on my shelf for years. I've got my soldering iron here. Uh, let's move some stuff. Soldering iron. Turn that on. Turn that to about 400 degrees. Oh no, that's 400 C. We don't want that to be about 360 C. And I'm gonna wait for that to warm up. Turn this off. Uh, you can see the 3D print progressing there. Slowly, but it's happening. This is saying it's gonna take a day, um, which I hope it doesn't, because I'd I'd love to be able to uh, get that done today. Um, I 
Oh, I can smell the soldering iron heating up. Yeah, it's still printing infill, so it'll it'll probably speed up after that. Okay, I think the soldering iron has reached temperature. So we're going to flip this board over. I'm actually going to try and move everything forward to me a little bit. Okay. And we go from one side to the other, soldering it all down. Um, let me grab my third hand as well. Not that I think I'll actually need it in this case. Get some masking tape in case I actually want to tape this down to the table. I don't know what I want to do yet. All right. Um, and I am using, as I said, uh, ancient Radio Shack solder that I've, I've had in my kit for ages. And it works okay. The flux should have dried out by now, but it hasn't. Uh, you can see this, yeah. So we're just gonna heat her up and flow a little solder down there. Come on, heat up the components too. Alright, I don't know if that works. Let me try and clean this iron off. Try that again. Go a little hotter too, because what the hell. Um, right. Flow a little solder in. That's much more like it. There we go. Let's try this one again. Heat that up. I also have some fresher solder, which I might want to try, because... I don't solder boards very often. I'm usually just soldering wires to other wires. And in that case, any old thing will work. But No, I think I think this is working. I think this is working. Yeah. I'm happy with that. Does anyone who uh, knows what they're doing, knows how to solder, can they look at that and tell me if, if I'm okay? I mean, if it conducts, it's good. Who cares? Okay. Now, this resistor looks like it's coming away a little bit, so. I just, yeah. Just tighten that lead so the components won't be coming loose off the board which again wouldn't matter but it doesn't look good all right now we're printing something different over there what is it doing I guess that's infill. Ah, uh, that that joint didn't look great. Let's try that again. There we go. Oh shit, am I soldering these? I'm soldering these on the wrong side, aren't I? Yep, no, I was supposed to solder these on the other side. Damn it. <laughs> well, I've already started, so this'll work. I think. Yeah, like it says right here component side 
and it says that right right here as well. I'm an idiot. Fuck. Um, well, it's a good thing I've got some solder wick. So let's just undo everything we just did and fix it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get these out, though. Shit. And this is totally fucking up the lacquer. Well, this is why you don't do things on stream. Yep, these are through hole vias. Yep, we're hosed. <clears throat> I think we're hosed. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just put out all the resistors on the solder side, or on the wrong side, and then we'll put the rest of the components on the correct side. Yeah, now I've I have fucked this up completely now. Shit. Okay. So what I've done is I've loosened this resistor, but it's not coming all the way out. So I'm gonna try and get it all the way out here. Yep, that's not happening. Well, shit. I guess I'll just put this together as good as we still can. Um, So Boldport does have a thing where if you tell them you fucked up and you're doing it online, they will send you a new one. But I'm not going to take advantage of that for this because clearly this was my own stupid fault. Yeah, I'm just making things worse. Shit. Oh, cool. Now I've got, I've gotten solder onto the actual pad, so this thing will probably never work. I'm gonna take, I'm just gonna take everything I haven't soldered down yet, which is the two caps, everything but the resistors. This will be fine. This will be fine. Okay, so we're gonna just finish these resistors backwards. It'll, I, I have an idea. It'll look cool. Don't worry about it. We're fine. We're fine. Nothing's fine. Everything's fine. I mean, obviously, this is the reason I was having good solder balls is because there's solder mask on all of this. Because you're not supposed to solder onto this side. But I'm getting it to flow down into oops, out of shot here. Oh, 
Oh, sorry. Was I missing chat as well? Yep. Oh, everyone's just commiserating me with me. That's all right. So I have a plan. I don't know if it's a good plan. And I'm not going to say what it is. Because I may change that plan by the time we get there. But right now, let's just solder these resistors in. Because that is... That is something I'm capable of doing. I'm also going to have a hard time powering this thing because I don't exactly have a power supply here and I don't think it takes 5 volts. But that's easier to come up with. All right. Clean the tip. That didn't. It's not getting down into the via. Come on. Whoa. Okay. So I only made a small mess of things, I think. All right. So we're going to go and just clip these off as flat as I can. And I do need to save a few resistor legs. So. And then I think what I'm going to try and do is something that I saw Scanlime do when she was putting together a bold port kit, which is you go back over these cut off solder blobs and then you reflow them to make them look pretty. And then it'll look like I meant to do this and I just wanted to keep all the resistors on the back so that you can see more, um, see more of the circuit board, right? Yeah. It's like I meant to do it. So, I'm sorry, I had a shot again. That one went flying. Ow, that one hit me right almost in the eye. Maybe I need to have my safety squints on for this. Uh, cut that a little bit flatter. Oh, and then, right, we have to put on some components again on the correct side. Okay. Now, I've cut these off super flush with the board. Those are... Cut off two flush with the board. Okay, whatever. Uh, so, where are we? Where is shot? Just gonna go in. Oh, yeah, no, that looks cool. Go in. Put a little ball. I have a shitty sponge as well to clean this off with. Not the best tools, but like I said, I never do this. So this is special occasion. Mm. 
Now these balls are all a little bit uneven, but what are you going to do? That one didn't come out well. Let's try and remove some of that here. Nope. Cut it off and try again. Perfect. Balls are definitely getting bigger from one side to the other. I don't know if you can tell that, but whatever. One more here. All right, well those aren't, now they're at least not sharp. Okay, so what did I say? The 471 cap had to be the 447 nanofarads. I'm going to Google for capacitor markings. Yeah, this doesn't make sense. We've got a 471 and a 473. But shouldn't... Well, this is saying that a 474 should be a 474 nanofarad, so a 473 would be a 47 picofarad? Sure. 47 picofarad? I'm, I'm going to go with that. Now, the 47 is C1, and C1 is here. So that's this hole and this hole.
Oh, I should probably check and make sure the soldering worked on this side. Got a little ball there, which I don't love, so let me try and... Just try and desolder that down a little bit. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Let me take our other... Our other cap. C2 is right here. All right, that's the right place for that. And then put our last resistor in. Okay, now bef before we fuck anything else up even more, I say I'm going to solder this part. Get these components back in because they fell out when I flipped the board over. Okay. Now this will be much easier to solder things on this side because this is the side that you're supposed to solder things on. Because you see the little copper rings there. Yep. Much easier. Much, much, much better. All right. And do this one. Perfect. I probably won't bother. Oh, well, maybe at the end I'll ball everything. Oh, sorry, out of shot again. Here we go. Not doing anything exciting, just cutting off resistor legs. Or, in this case, capacitor legs, maybe. Whatever they are. All right, now, I want to do the wire links next, I think. So that would be this one, this one, and then this one. Start at the end. These links are a little bit too long for the lengths of resistor leg that I have remaining here. This must be the last one. That's not even, okay. And that's like the longest leg that I had too, shit. <laughs> Let's try this one. I don't know what I'll do. Let's get some needle nose pliers in here. Perfect. Let's get 
that where you can see it. So now I just need four more of those. Where does the next one go? The next one goes here. The second one in. taking the ones that have a little solder blob on the end because then they'll stick in the hole, which is nice. And there's number three. And I need two more. So if you see this piece of wire, there's a tiny little solder blob on the end of it. Then when I drop it, it doesn't go through the hole. You can see it uh, right here, at the bottom of frame. So that's helping me then bend them to the right length. Well, they do fall out if you just flip it over like that. All right, now I'm gonna try and get a better shot of what I've been doing here. So I just sort of figure out how long this needs to be. And then we can lift it up and out. Bend the down with the needle nose pliers. And looks like I bent that a little long, so hold on here. Whoop. worked that one pretty bad, but yeah. Like I keep saying, I'm not perfect at this. I'm not even very good. Don't even know why I'm doing it, but I thought it would be fun. If you want to see an idiot solder a bold port kit, a bold port kit, oh, I got the stream for you. All right. Now, Flipping those up on the other side here. You can just barely see the wires sticking through, but this ought to do it. All right, here we go. Solder, solder, solder. This one resistor, oh, we're out of frame again. This one resistor here is driving me nuts. That's where I tried to uh, take it out and put it back in the right side. And it, it came out, I don't know if you can really see, just that much. It's going to drive me insane. Oh, and then we've got our last wire here. That one just had some wire sticking out in an awkward spot. This does not look soldered all the way down. Okay. Hey, 
Okay, Scuba Vince, I am doing a Bold Port. Bold Port Electronics Club. They uh, send you these cool um, electronics kits, which in the mail, which don't come with really super a lot of instructions, and then you put them together. And I put this one together halfway backwards, which is why we've got components on this side, and then also components on this side, because this is the side we're supposed to put components on. So, next thing is diodes. Or I could do the transistors. Transistors are marked which way they need to go around. I mean, so are the diodes too, but I'm an idiot, as we've already established. So, we will cut these transistors off of the backing tape. Derp, derp. And one more. Now, you can see how they're marked. And you can see on the top of them that they're sort of uh, hemispherical like that. So let me endeavor to get these in. Oh, no, that one. Yeah, they, they screw with you. All right, so there's that one. This one goes in like so. That one like this. Bend a couple of the leads down. You don't need to bend them all down. And I should have one more. Where? Where did it go? Did I drop it? Did I lose it? Does everyone else see it and I don't see it? I had six of them. I know we had six of them to start with. Come on. Um, how did I lose? A component. Come on. Come on. Did did anyone see where that went? It's honestly, this is not a very exciting kit. It's a um, little touch sensitive keypad from the 1970s. <sighs> but if we can't find this, um, little transistor, we're screwed and we're not going to finish it. Component legs all over the floor. Didn't fall under there. Oh, everyone already left. 
I can't even have anyone help me look for this thing. Um, Oh, you are still here. Yes. I, I've lost a tiny component, and I don't know where it went. It's one of these okay. black things. One of those black things. Should be Hi, chat. on yeah, my hello. desk, like, right here. It should not have flown anywhere, but... Ba, da, 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 da. <laughs> no, I know. I've lost a tiny black thing on the floor. That's what is it that you're looking for? Uh, one of these. No? No. Put that in here. It's okay. I guess the stream is just over. <laughs> and you looked on your desk already? Yeah, no. I literally just cut them off. I got six of them. I was sticking them in the thing. And, and one, one of them, of them disappeared. Has disappeared. Oh, cool. Well. Hmm. Uh -huh. Thank you. I don't. Uh, the bottom window, that is my 3D printer. I'm printing a thing to fix our curtain in the streaming office. But this transistor has disappeared, so it's not in my pants. Not in your shoes. Not in my shoes. Careful. Careful. No, I moved this thing. It couldn't be under here. This was here. It didn't fly there. Under there. Maybe it's under the table leg. That's the only place I could think of that yeah. it might have gone. But Do we have a little sweep? Sweet. It's called a broom. <laughs> yeah, it's not called a sweet. I can just look under there. It ain't under there. Under the other one? There's no way it could bounce that far. Yeah. I feel like it must be on your desk somewhere. I'm gonna, it'll be embedded into my arm in about a week. Yeah. And then I'll find it. Sorry. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <sighs> Shit. Well, I mean, I guess I could solder the rest of these on, but, um... I have to imagine it ain't gonna work too well. Well, actually, no, eh. Yeah, it's not gonna work very well, but whatever. Let's... I started it, let's finish it. How did that happen? Man. Sorry, that, that really kind of just bummed me out here. I've just messed up. All right, let's let's fix this here. Okay, yeah, just break that. I don't need to desolder it. Oh, sorry, I don't know if you you saw that very well, but I 
soldered two legs of this together, which is not what you want to do. All right. Um, trimmer here. Oh, you know, I bet this would work a lot better if I soldered these all on here. Keep going and, and think I'll find it? Uh, that kind of, see the secret crap doesn't really work for me. I, I believe that I will find it embedded in my arm at some point in the future. And I think, I believe actually because we don't have uh, LEDs to drive with this thing, the transistor might be okay if we omit it. Um, like I barely know how this works, so I'm probably just making things up, but... I believe these transistors are here to drive uh, higher loads. All right. Just trying to clean up these solder balls here and make it look acceptable. All right. So, final components here. Well, we've got a few more components, but we have headers, which will be easy to install, diodes, which I need to install the correct direction around, and then the actual uh, chips here, which are just NAND gates, but they're on a chip. Um... I'm just going to check these diodes one more time to double check that I'm installing them the correct way. So black, negative on the black side, and positive on the positive side, and that looks like a diode to me. So that means the black goes towards the side with the line. All right. Oh wait, although this is marked red on here, I've just noticed. Let me Google the diode symbol. I, I remember my basic electronics. Where's the mouse? Where's my mouse? Come on, mouse cursor. It's hiding for some, there we go. Uh, Yeah, no, I know how a diode works, even though the, this is marked red. Red, in this case, is negative. Don't think about it too hard. Okay. So... We are going to put the side of the diode that is has the line 
towards the side of the diode symbol that has the line. I'm pretty sure that's the correct way that the diode goes. So that would look on this side, something like this. Stripe down, okay, good. Now actually, I don't even have to look at the back anymore because I'm pretty sure every single one of these holes that is not yet taken up uh, towards the keyboard area ends up with a diode in it. All right. And the leads. Yep, diode here. And a diode goes there. Oh, wait. No, diode does not go there. A diode goes here. That's the one link at the end we don't actually use. It's, it's dashed, and I think that has something to do with if you wanted to daisy chain a few of these things. What you would do that for, I don't <clears throat> entirely know. Um, now, personally, I want to put, I think I want to put the header uh, on the bottom with the resistors because it's also got the labels on the bottom. So what is this? This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 pins. 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And that make four on the end. Snap that apart. And actually, I think these are designed so you don't need to solder them in. Yeah, they kind of friction fit. So that's cool. But we'll, maybe we'll save that for the, nope, those are in now. Okay. All right, well then let's solder down these friggin' diodes. And wrap this shit up. Oh, I put the diodes in backwards, didn't I? No, this is supposed to be the solder side, never mind. I'm done. Are we in frame here? Let's come on. There we go. going on here there we go and stay in shots let's get the tops of these Diodes, what did I do there? And... Oh, I've moved out of shot again. 
All you missed is me doing that. And again, right here. Come on. All right, that's acceptable. Let's bend these wires back up and chop them off. And then dip sockets. I don't think I've ever soldered a dip socket. I imagine it's just like soldering anything else. I need a demagnetizer. My tools have all become magnetic from my magnetic tool holder. Which is great until it magnetizes your die cutters. Wow, that flew high. And I'm just going to... Uh-oh, did that come all the way through? I may have accidentally cut some of the pad off there. Cutting things a little close. Uh, oh, yeah. sorry. But... We're looking pretty good here. So I could. I guess I'll put the rest of that in there. And let's start sticking in some chips. So. The only thing we have to make sure about with the chip is got a little little notch in there right there but not on this side so we got to make sure the notch lines up with the notch like so because that is your pin zero marker or pin one marker Okay. Let me just grab here. Solder wick can hold that up. And you can't really see on this shot, but the pins are kind of sticking up through. So I'm just going to go ahead. Oh, this one's get hot. Yeah. Solder adjacent pins here. Because that way I can then move around without these falling back off again. Ooh, and that is something, the lead that I did not trim well enough. I'm getting in the way right here as well. Okay, so those are all soldered down on one corner. Yeah, this is this board is starting to stick up too much. Um, here we go. Put it in the bold port box. That'll work. Now let's solder down IC3. So this is going a little bit slower because the uh, metal in these dip sockets is wicking the heat away from me. So I need to hold the soldering iron there for longer to get everything hot enough.
All right, now move on to IC2. I wonder if this would be easier to do looking at the uh, looking at the screen. Let me let me try one with the screen here. Whoop. Yeah, depth is the trick. Because my eyeballs can do depth, but the screen can't. Yeah, this is not zoomed in enough to really need. Microscope, anyway. All right. Let's see how our print is coming. Now it's saying six and a half hours. That's much more reasonable, but that's still not gonna get done before the stream is. But, uh, oh yeah, no, you can even see it on the screen there. That's looking like a box. Let's get that to be a better ball. Okay. Now, it may be that I've finished soldering this. Let's just take a quick look at everything here. Not my finest work, but these joints all look acceptable. Yeah, let's um, get a little isopropyl alcohol. I'll be right back. Paper towels here. And just, you know, pharmacy grade uh, isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to go ahead and wipe this off here. Wipe off all the flux residue and whatnot. Oh, probably. Turn off the soldering iron before we burn the house down. So let's just go in. The correct tool for the job. This job is like um, an ESD safe toothbrush or something like that. But I'm not made of money. Okay, wipe up the excess here, give that a moment to dry off. 
I think that's looking much better now. Yeah. That's cleaned up most of the goo around these connections. Yeah, all right. So, I'm still soaking on that corner. Um, Don't feel like running to the other room to get another paper towel. I will just use a napkin. Hmm. Maybe my flux doesn't like being cleaned up with isopropyl. It's, it's, this has sort of just made the whole thing sticky now. Yeah, no, the whole thing is definitely sticky now. So let's... Try that again. Well, don't press too hard or I'll be bending components on the other side. Okay, that's a little bit better. All right. So, finally, the NAND gates. Not too difficult to install here. You just got to get this lined up. Shouldn't be too hard to get these in here. What is going on? Oh, the legs are bent out a little bit. Let's squeeze those in just slightly. And make sure the notch is lined up with the notch. Well, those have got to be squeezed way in. How in the world did that happen? How in the world did I do that? Soldering was fine this whole time, and then I just wrecked the... Stupid dip package here. get this back on camera. Um, wow, this is Fucked. Yep, I've just bent the pins again trying to get it in here. What did I do wrong? Alright, well, let's call that one a loss. <laughs> oh, man.
Yeah, the legs on this are bowed out so much that it won't go into both sides of the socket at once, which I thought is how you're supposed to put these buggers in. This does not feel right. Now, once again, a pin, one of the pins didn't go in and it went all fucking sideways on me. Pull that in here, see? One in the middle, too. So, there's that sorted, but... God damn. Okay. I got one of them in. Let's let's fix all the legs on this one. So here we go. Bend them flat in that direction. All right, Let's see what happens. Definitely got some pieces of paper towel stuck down the board, which is probably why you use, you know, something, the correct tool. Okay, that one just went right in. That was no problem. That went in like it, I was expecting it to. Now, let's see if there's enough of this dip socket left on the end here. To make it work. Just bending the legs in a hair. All right, now, despite the brokenness of this, that seems to have gone in. So, <clears throat> all right, how do we do this? Hold on.
sorry, I'm looking for a power supply here. Well, I don't have the right bits to do this either. I could take a USB lead and chop the ends off, but that doesn't sound like a great idea right now. So, ta-da! Um, yeah, I don't. I can't find a battery holder. I don't actually know how much voltage this takes. Probably five, three to five volts. Does it even say on their damn web page? Let's see. noise the printer's making isn't great. Yeah, it's got um, G and V is all that's labeled. So, well, fine, here's what I can do. I have a breadboard, like so. And then I have 2.1 millimeter jack barrel for the breadboard. Uh, and then I've got some breadboard wires here. Okay, so let's see here. And here's the power supply. So this is all live. Uh, let's go ahead and think. Can't even tell what ports this, what plugs this in is in. So I think that would be one in three here. Presumably, there will be voltage at the end of this. I'm going to end up just electrocuting myself, aren't I? Oh. All right. Uh, DC volts. What do we have? Here, I'll hold one and just touch the other. Is this five volts or 12 volts? I don't even remember, let me check. Five volts, all right. So, White is negative. Let me flip those around. So white is positive. All right. I've got those jumpered over to here. 
And now we're gonna put get continuity mode here. And we wanna go between Ground. Well, first of all, actually, first of all, I should check the circuit out. So ground over here to ground over here. Uh, and I actually put this into, that's in diode mode. This should be continuity mode. Yeah, all right. So ground to ground, ground to voltage, voltage to voltage. Now, let's check. We want this to this. All right. I wish I had some male to female headers. Let me, I might, let me see if I do. female headers so I can make my own male to female headers all right this will this will be less likely to electrocute everyone maybe so black we said was ground because we're not idiots White is voltage. And now, um, grab just another one of these from. Actually, I can grab it from the ground over here. Ground is ground. And I may need another hand. See, so ground over here, this over here. Okay, so E is not working, but let's see if Example X is working here. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't have enough hands. And I also don't entirely understand how this thing works, so I can't really test it. <sighs> this was a wildly successful stream, wasn't it? Well, I hope everyone had fun. I did. Um, I think I'm, I did have some other plans for today, but this has kind of exhausted me and I've made a huge mess, which I now have to clean up before I can do anything else. So I think, I think that is all for today. Thank you for watching. And I may be back this weekend, and we'll try this again. Uh, if I can find that part, we'll finish this up. Do some stuff. Do some programming. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's it. Goodbye.